10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Well, this is the EMI 2001 broadcast color camera mounted on a, Vint a Vinton HP hydraulic pressure pedestal by means of a Vinton Mark III pan and tilt head here in the middle. These cameras were brought into service in the mid-1950s, uh, 1960s, I should say. They came into service in the BBC in 1967, and uh, they're used in most of the London production studios. They're four tube cameras, one for each primary, and one for luminance. The tendency these days is to go over to three tube cameras, but we'll, we'll speak about that uh, at a later date in more detail. These, these cameras have one and a quarter inch tubes, and these days the tendency is to go to one inch tubes. But they're a very much liked camera, very much liked by cameramen. Uh, they're a cameraman's camera, and I'll just show you now one or two of the things that they'll do. John is the cameraman on the other end of the camera, and you see him in position, in an operating position, with his headphones, with his hand on the focus control on this side, his left hand there, and round on the other side, which we'll look at in more detail, his hand is, is on the focus control. Uh, let's just see one or two things that the camera will do. If I can take over as cameraman now and ask John to sit in, uh, we'll just have a look at the range of shots we can get. Thank you, John. The camera has a 10 to 1 ratio Angenot zoom with a minimum focusing distance of 16 inches. This means you can get some quite useful close-ups. And from this sort of mid-shot, I can zoom in progressively by twisting the twist grip to a very tight, big close-up. I'm now about four feet away from the subject. Um, at the minimum, minimum focusing distance, I'll try and get you a shot of my watch on the table. I'm looking down at it somewhat obliquely. I'm focusing as close as I can get and tracking in. I can't quite get close enough for the min minimum focusing distance. But this is the tightest shot I can get. And this is the widest shot I can get on 50 degrees. The zoom lens angles, which we always talk about in television, rather than focal lengths, focal lengths can vary, in fact, between different cameras. The zoom lens angle ratio is from 50 degrees, as you see it now, progressively in to 5 degrees, which we've reached now. Now for a little more detail about the operational controls. In my left hand, I control the zoom control, and this is just achieved by uh, moving the control to the left to zoom, to zoom out, and to the right in order to zoom in. At the same time, the focus control is covered by the right hand here on the side of the camera. Uh, in the BBC, the preference is to have a double turn focus control, which doesn't make focusing uh, quite so, um, so coarse. It's, it's much, much uh, finer control. Looking at the controls now on the back of the camera, um, the most important aspect as far as the cameraman is concerned is the viewfinder picture. Um, and here we, we can just about see the viewfinder there. There's a quite a high level of ambient light here in the studio, of course, and this is for this reason, we have this uh, le uh, ho hood around the viewfinder so we can keep out the extraneous light. Viewfinder controls are quite comprehensive on this camera. We have controls for width and height here, and for centering horizontally and vertically so we can position the picture wherever we want on the tube to ensure we don't have any cut off and we can get the uh, aspect ratio correct. Lower down we've got a control for focus, which is a very fine control and you can't in practice notice much difference. And at the bottom the usual controls which you see on all domestic televisions for brightness and contrast. The dimmer control here 
is one for dimming the cue lights inside the camera. Now, the on-air cue lights are at the top here. You can't see them, of course, unless I'm actually punched up on air. There's a meter in the center, and on the left, there's a white light which shows you when the zoom is on manual. Now, look, if we can look down here to the other controls on the back of the camera, there's another little cu cluster of controls here which are of importance to the cameraman. First of all, we have the filters. Now, these filters were initially intended to be for neutral density filters and color correcting filters for when the cameras were used on outside broadcasts. In general, in the studio, um, we're looking for as much light as we can possibly get. And so the filter position is always number one, which is a clear position, position allowing as much light as possible to enter the camera and reach the tube. Um, in the studio these days, we usually have star filters on positions two, three, and four. And there may be some residual filters left in on the other positions. I'll try and get um, a star filter, see what there is in this camera. There you see a four-point star filter, a six-point, and an eight-point. And I achieve this simply by dialing up the number on this filter wheel. Six point, four point, and back to clear. It's as simple as that. And you can put in whatever other filters you like um, in any other positions. The filters, in fact, are in the side of the camera here, behind a little flap. And it, it's rather a fiddly job to change these filters, but it's not often done. The other controls on the back this is an hour meter which used to record the um, hours for which the tubes were used. Um, this was necessary when the tubes were on higher, and in fact I don't believe it's, uh, it's red these days. A heater switch which controls the tube heaters, and a cue light switch um, on if it's down, off if it's up. The reason for that is that if you're doing a show, uh, an audience show, and you don't want to give away the fact that you're on shot at the time, uh, you can switch the cue lights off, or you may get a reflection in a window in the set, and you can, you can lose this just by turning off the cue lights. Going down a little, we've got an external viewfinder control, which enables you to receive on your viewfinder, superimposed on your own picture, any other external picture you may like to have. We may just be able to see that. You can see there, I'm not sure what that is, I think it's studio out. And I can switch that in just by flicking this switch. There's somebody kindly going through all the uh, various combinations. Um, the availability of picture on this is controlled by a switch in the CCU by the vision operator. And the way, the way that we achieve um, whatever feed we want is by pressing this call CCU button to speak to racks, as we call them. And we ask, um, we press the button and ask them to feed whatever output we would like. It may be camera two to match on a caption, or we may like to have studio out so that we can ensure that our shots match everyone else's in the production. And this is very quickly and easily um, done. Um, the switch on the right here is a relatively unimportant one. It just really merely um, switches on the microphone on the cameraman's headset. It can save embarrassment at times. Um, if, you could, if you switch it off while you're muttering under your breath. These three are pr uh, production talkback, which is the production talkback from the director in the gallery. Intentionally, I say intentionally because it's not the, the case in the BBC, but um, it was intended by the camera manufacturers, and it's used in most of the commercial companies. A program sound pot here controls the amount of uh, program sound that you get. Um, in the BBC, I believe that's used for engineering talkback. Uh, CCU controls the uh, talkback to the racks operator. So you've got these three knobs, and you can achieve your own balance. Now, moving on to this panel, this is probably the most important operationally on the back, and the, the only one which would tend to be operated during a production, apart possibly from star filters. These are preset positions for zoom lens angle. Uh, you can see as I depress them, the lights come on, and they take over then from the manual operation. And by using this little control here, I can set whatever particular angle I want. So if there's some point of reference I want to come back to very quickly, I can set it up on here by, for example, 
achieving that sort of framing, um, if I've been zooming 